Rosemary. I'm not Rosemary. What in the hell y'all knocking on my so If I'm not Rosemary, why y'all knocking on my door? Hey, don't put that camera in my face, man. Get out my can you turn the mic off, please? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who now, baby? <laughs> the Talk Lady Show starts now with me, your host. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Turn your mic off. While you're in there banging on the equipment. We're going to get it together. I mean it. Today, officially. I didn't know if you... Uh, and then you still banging. I didn't bang on nothing. Every time you move something, it's like a bang. I didn't know that if you... Uh, oh my God! Wait, I didn't know that if you turned the mics on while I was playing it to get lower like that. I didn't know. Sorry, radio world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Well, let's see if I can make this day as exciting as yesterday was. I'll try. 702, right here on com. You're listening to The Talk Lately Show. I do have an interesting couple of stories to tell you. Um, one I got from a good friend over there by the name of. Um, no. It's not you. I can't remember her name at the moment. I don't know why. Oh, Alicia. Alicia Moore, superstar hairstylist. Stylist of the stars. Stylist of Little Mo. Stylist of a whole bunch of other people, SWV included. She's a stylist. She's somebody. She's a, a, a fashionista. Yeah, yeah. I like her a lot. <laughs> She's Alicia Moore And she posted this picture today It's interesting I love the story I had to comment on it and everything And it has to do with this little girl Right? How about I read it in the words of Pretty Chrissy 26 It's very long too Here's what she wrote You don't know me personally But it takes a lot for me to lose my patience this is for all the rumors, speculations, opinions, and false stories. I'm about to give it to y'all real because this shit got people calling me, harassing me, and dis disrespecting my personal phone. This lady made her daughter a hair appointment, so I got up and went to the shop. After I had been waiting for about an hour and a half, they come, so I did the little girl's hair through all of the moving and turning around. So when I was almost finished, I texted the child's mother to tell her she can come. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Uh, these words are so small. To tell her she can come. So she says, okay. Uh, um, and uh, uh, about 20 minutes later, she texts back and says, her dad is coming to pick her up. We waited again. Gosh, people need to learn how to type with punctuation. I can't stand it. This is like 15 run-on sentences. This, that, uh, that was all one sentence. You boy in the hood now, baby. I'm gone. Later, she texts back and says, her dad is coming to pick her up. So we wait. No, look, no comma. So we waited again about a little over an hour. So I texted her and and say what time is he coming because I have something to do she says he's still not there okay I'm about to come uh, so about 10 minutes later she says I got a flat so can you bring her to my house I say okay I take the little girl to the apartment her mom said uh, her mom say her mom say but she didn't give her apartment number. So I try calling. I get no answer. So the little girl says, this is my grandmother's house. My mama stays down the street. So I take the little girl there. So the little girl gets out and goes in the house. I waited. She came back out and says, her, uh, my mom's not there. Just my little brother. Just my brothers. So I said, y'all here by y'all self? 
She said, yeah. So I called the woman again, no answer. So I waited about 30 minutes and called her back. She finally answers and sounds unsure as to how I'm going to get my money. So we come up with a decision that she will bring it to my house. So I leave them, realize I think she's trying to play me. So I turned around and head back to her house. I called, no reply. I texted and said, never mind. I will meet you to get my money. Still no reply. So I go back to her house and politely ask the little girl to come outside. So I text the lady and tell her I'm about to cut the braids out. I waited for a reply. See, that was exciting. Did you hear that part? Are you listening? <laughs> go play it now. It's too late. So I'll, I'll try again. Little girl to come. I told the little girl to come outside. So I texted the lady and told her I'm about to cut her braids out. I waited for a reply before I did it. Still no reply. So I cut the braids and went on about my business. At the end of the day, I spent nine hours away from my kids for nothing. Y'all wasn't in my shoes or in my position. I have known I don't play when it comes to my job or supporting my family. Yeah, the little girl didn't do it, but I did style on her head. So it is what it is. So while y'all circulating the other pick, pass around the real story. The question isn't if I needed the money. Damn right, I don't work for free. And y'all wondering where the mother was while I was cutting. I couldn't tell you, but had she been there, I would have gotten my money and this post wouldn't have been necessary. Get your baby! So... Most of the people that were commenting on the story were more concerned about the child's face being shown than the actual incident that took place. Uh, so the cutting of the braids, um, the people not getting paid for a service that they provided, and it, the one person that I'm very disappointed in is not the lady that cut the braids. I'm, I'm disappointed in the parents in this situation. The parents in the situation are the problem here. She, because my opinion on this is that she had no intention on paying for this child's hair to be done. She had a flat. Oh, every excuse in the book. Her father's coming to get her. Every excuse in the book. First of all, where were you going? Why did you have to go home while your daughter looks like she's about eight, nine years old? She's in a foreign place getting her hair done, and you leave. What were you going to go do? I have suggestions on what she was doing. Is this the... <laughs> this sounds like a crackhead problem. I'm sorry. Some ridiculous hood bitch that couldn't get up from nothing. Mm, I can't. Details, details, details. No, they're okay. He did that on my headsets. No, they're okay. There, yeah, my headsets wasn't up though. Um, the girl's mother didn't pay for, um, and she cut the braids out. Shake my head. I couldn't. I couldn't embarrass a child like, like this. I, I, quite frankly, I probably don't think the child was embarrassed. I don't think the child felt embarrassed. The, pro the child probably was disappointed because she probably loved her hair. She probably didn't know what was going on anyway. So. I think the child probably no. I actually think they she did know what was going on. Um, but I think the child probably wasn't disappointed in the fact that um, she probably loved her hair. Her hair was really cute. Nice set of two hundreds. It's a, <laughs> so here's what I wrote. I'm just get down to tell you what I wrote about the situation. A lot of people agree too. The mother knew exactly what she was doing. She was going to use every excuse in the world to duck this woman out and get her daughter a free hairdo. 
the better thing to do would have been to be tr been truthful, but she wasn't, and the end result was embarrassment. Those braids would have been in my back seat too, without the child. <laughs> now that's too bad. Mom tried it. Although I agree the child's face being exposed on the internet is not a good thing, but the mother set her daughter up. Um, her, the mother set her daughter up in this situation, and because there is no ramifications, I mean, because there are ramifications for, to every action, and the end result was the cutting of the braids. That's too low. What's going on? What are you doing in there? Put it back to where it was and stop hitting the button so hard. Remember that? It's like you throwing rocks at it. Rocks that you found in the creek. Alright, let's move on. That's a, it was just very disappointing. I um I was waiting for the excitement um I thought I was coming to look at a story that was going to be exciting or something happened, you know, and then come to find out it's a, a mother story doing some hood dirt, something real grimy and stupid. What if the it was, what if we all found out that she didn't even have a car? That would be some bull. I got a flat. Where? It's not your responsibility to fix the, uh, a flat on the bus. She, 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 mm -hmm. she had those sketches. Heelys. <laughs> she has got a flat in my heelys. <laughs> oh, boy. Wouldn't you be the one? Wouldn't you like to be the person to win? Uh, I mean, to have FedEx drop off thousands and thousands and thousands of pairs of Nikes? Yeah, that's what happened to this. Um, it says, "What do you, uh, what do you do when millions of dollars in Nikes land on your doorstep? Wear some, sell some, bless a, new, a few friends and family members. The possibilities are obviously endless. The chances of a FedEx dropping thousands of fresh kicks at your door is next to nil. I say next to." Only because a Kentucky woman claims that the case after she did end, ended up with three million dollars worth of free Nike footwear on her porch. Three million dollars worth of shoes. Ooh. I mean, what do you all in her size? That's the point that has to be made. I mean, how many pairs of those shoes were in your size? Five years ago, a large shipment of Nike sneakers was supposed to go on. Uh, we're supposed to go from the store company distribution center in Tennessee to another center in Texas. The three million dollars worth of, of footwear vanished en route, but recently turned up in a house in Kentucky. But when she was like wearing a pair of shoes every month, she's gonna get through those shoes. A woman in Radcliffe, Kentucky, and her daughter tell K uh, W L K Y T V that they had bought the load of sneakers off another woman and were selling them for five dollars a pair. Apparently, Nike had called and contacted them, and the shoes were stolen, and they had been stolen since 2009. So, and there were three million dollars worth of shoes in front of uh, in my front yard, says the seller who claims to have no idea the sneakers were stolen. They confiscated all of them. But they're all old now. You might as well let them keep them. They're all dated. What are they going to do with the shoes? They dated. 2009. To who? Who's buying them? They're dated. No. Somebody's uncle. Oh, okay. Let's see. That's how I many they should give them away. Oh, didn't know they were stolen. Did they think it was a case of Hoarders Extreme Sneakers Edition? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a good one. That was a good one. I guess I tell the news crew the same thing, though. No need to rent yourself out. Oh, yeah, sure. Her daughter is still sporting some of the Air Jordans from the huge stash. Okay, if it was Jordans, maybe. 
They're still old. A stash of shoes described the massive array of footwear they had spread out on their lawn. I can't even tell you how many shoes we had. It was unbelievable. She calls the W. Uh, she recalls to W L K Y. There were flip flops. There were Jennifer Lopez, Kim Kardashian heels, expensive shoes. Oh, they had heels and everything. It wasn't just Nikes. They said during the week they would sort through the piles of shoes to match up correct pairs, and then sell them at a flea market. That's the worst place to sell shoes. That's when they come and get your ass. Yeah. The flea market? Please. I'll sit there for not even two hours and make $200, says the daughter. I never knew the Nike Maid, Kardashian, Pro Models, and Jennifer Lopez limited editions. So it sounds like these nincompoops didn't know what they were selling or holding. I've never actually seen it written out. How do you spell that? N I N C O M P O O P S. Wow. Hmm. Speaking of shoes, that's what I'm going to do this weekend. How dare you, Sandra Rose? Oh my gosh, how dare her? How dare her? How dare her call Biggie's son? <laughs> oh my gosh, she outed Faith Evans and Biggie's son. Oh my gosh. There was a picture that sold for some t- um, Instagram. I need to get on Instagram more often. He had just graduated from high school. Congratulations for that. But he took a picture that was obviously um, uh, in the stance of, you know, supermaning that hoe with another man. No, I'm just playing. They were Titanicking. As if that was worse. I mean, if that's not worse. I mean, it's not. Whoa. Worse? Did I say that? Like it's a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. But Santa Rose did it. I didn't do it. I seen the picture and he was like, this the man. (laughs) And his cap and gown. Good luck, CJ. I mean, everybody has. Okay. <laughs> everybody has needs. Chris Brown is freshly freed and vowing to clean up his life so he never gets thrown behind bars again. Mm hmm. Come on, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm kind of sleepy. I am. (sighs) That was good. Okay, now I'm awake. Follow me on Twitter at Talk Lately. I'm always talking all day long, doing different things, talking about people. I talk about people all day long, too. It's fun. It is fun. I'm going to start taking my headphones out of here, because he keeps adjusting them to fit his head, and these are mine. I'm surprised I let him wear them. I'm in fact, I'm putting them fat boys in here. You should, you should let me get the fat boys, and then he can take these. No, because then I won't be able to tell them apart. Because they're the same. So sources close to Chris um, tell TMZ the singer is making 
a Lindsay type pledge to stay away from drugs and bad people, especially those connected to gangs. I didn't know he had any connections to the gang. Oh, my God. Chris seems to be blaming part of his problems, which landed him in jail for 108 days on people with whom he was hanging. But he's also acknowledging his problems with violence were largely his doing. Doctors believe his erratic behavior was largely the result of bipolarity. He's now on meds and the doctors say he's now stable. Good luck, Chris. I don't know what to say. I like the dude. I do. I like him. He's um, a very good talent. And I think he's misunderstood. I know people with that bipolar crap. I know people with bipolar and schizophrenia. So it's a double edged sword. It's like, damn, don't cut me. Okay, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you getting ready to do with that knife? Oh, where are you going? I thought you going to cut me. Because they, they, they can't focus. <laughs> or when they're in love with you. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. One minute is. <laughs> Damn mess. <sighs> Maybe this will happen here. Um, Seattle, Washington, just to prove the um, the fifteen dollar minimum wage hike. Yep. I don't think their minimum wage is already like thirteen dollars. Seattle is set to have the highest minimum wage in the country after it passed Monday's legislation that would gradually increase the figure to $15 an hour. Seattle Mayor Ed Mary said last month the plan to increase minimum wage demonstrates how Seattle, Se in Seattle, Seattle can lead the conversation in the nation to address the growing problem of in income inequality. <clears throat> Income equality. Income inequality. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't get that E in there for some reason. <laughs> probably because you're sleeping. It is. It probably has a lot to do with that. The city landmark legislation is part of a nationwide push to combat income inequality. At a time when President Barack Obama's efforts to raise the federal minimum wage from seven twenty five to ten ten an hour floundered on Capitol Hill. It's so funny how when stuff like that happens, like when Congress doesn't want to pass stuff, he, and I have to say it's him, he just moves on. But that's not how you fight a battle. You can't just move on and let it die and then try to come back to it when it's almost time for you to leave office. It's not fair to the rest of us. If you're going to fight for something and we are voted and we are right behind you and rallying and doing all this stuff, why would you stop fighting just because Congress stopped? Now you don't hear anybody talking about the minimum. It was a big thing in the news a couple of weeks ago. Now it's gone. Now we're talking about this POW in the war and, hit, and, and giving those five people from Guantanamo Bay. I, <coughs> I'm sorry. It's just that, it, that whole situation just pisses me off. I mean, it doesn't piss me off because I don't think he was wrong. Because if I was one, if I was a prisoner of war, I would want you to come save me too. I don't care. Hey, hey! I know you said you don't, um, <laughs> you don't, you don't. What is it? What am I trying to say with terrorists? You don't negotiate with terrorists. But hey, it's me. Come get me. Hello. Is anybody there? The American. <laughs> I, I live there too. I got social security. I'm gonna look. It's right here. <laughs> Don't leave me. Negotiate, please. Tell them anything. <laughs> I just 
Just bring me home. Like, you know I came over here for you. Hello? I didn't get here by myself. Man, it's hard to talk about if man, whether this man um, was leaving on his, of his own volition or did he get captured? And then got, you know, held hostage or did he, the facts basically. Ah, uh, man. I'm so sick of this war. I can't even see what time. I'm. Okay, I'll do that. Can I see what time is left? Right, can I do it when I get ready to skedaddle? Thank you. 49, 48, 47. But anyway. I honestly, and, and it's only because it's in the news that we, you know, everybody's, I don't think everybody's dwelling on it. I, I, quite frankly, I don't think anybody really cares. Except for the people that are on these websites that are um, commenting on, I, you know, it, it's their hate for President Obama that's driving the conversation. And the fact that they always say, you know, you know, something about him being a, you know, him, himself being in love with a terrorist. I mean, come on, how ridiculous can you be? Look, our phone lines are open at one eight five five eight three five five eight five seven extension one, and the text lines are open too at four four three six four two nine four zero three. Come on, communicate with me. But I'm going to break right now, and when we come back, we got more. And up at eight o'clock tonight is the Sharon Nixon Show. On BigExposedRadio.com. For less than $50 a month, you can have the most intelligent home on the block. With Xfinity, you'll get some of the fastest internet speeds in the nation, so you can stream movies and shows on any of your personal devices and program your DVR on the go. Xfinity even lets you control your lights and temperature and get security and fire alerts from any PC or tablet 24-7, 365. All services are backed by a 30-day guarantee and start at just $49.99. Call today, 866-824-4019. 866-824-4019. Drug, alcohol, and gambling addiction can be devastating for you and your loved ones. Don't let the disease of addiction ruin everything you have worked so hard for. If you or a loved one is suffering from a drug, alcohol, or gambling addiction, call now and get a free confidential consultation. Help is only a phone call away. Call 1-877-867-3063. That's 1-877-867-3063. Remember this? Excuse me? When do women typically reach their peak, their sexual prowess, whatever you want to call it? What age? Pitched a reality show to me earlier today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who did that? I, I think it's in poor taste to even talk about it. I wouldn't even... You know what I'm saying? Would it be some drama for your ass? If it's the reality show to you. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. It pitched a reality show to me like, wouldn't this be a great reality show? Okay. It was based on a guest that we're working up for. This. I told you about an NBA player's son yes. who got a girl pregnant yeah. and the girl is HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And full, full body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry. We got, she's coming. She's coming. <laughs> figure out whether we're going to send her a ticket or just take a phone call. So he said, wouldn't that be interesting, a reality show of people finding out the results of HIV tests? Think about the drama. But that that would that would be a good show, though. Seriously, but that's that'd be a hot show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't support that. That that um. I mean that high drama. You know, somebody else out there, white, is going to steal your idea. Remember where you guys heard it first, please. Our
Just join the club that gives you stuff. Hey, thanks. Radio loyalty. Here's how it works. Just click on the radio loyalty banner right now and sign up. Then you keep on listening like you already do. But now you earn points. Those points add up, and you can trade them in for stuff in the radio loyalty store. Earn more points by sharing your station with friends on Facebook and Twitter, answering surveys, and by using the apps in the new player's app store. Pretty simple, right? Radio loyalty. Click that banner to join now. We're rewarding you for something you already do, listening to us. It's Radio Loyalty, and it's an easy way for you to get free stuff. All you do is sign up. Go ahead and click the banner now. You'll earn points as you listen, points you can trade in for great products and services in the Radio Loyalty store. You can earn even more points when you share your favorite station with friends on Facebook and Twitter. Radio Loyalty, it's free to sign up, so click the banner to join now. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you missed this on Talk Lately. I wonder, because I'm going to pick up the copy of this. The Cosmo. Uh, the phone call, here's what she said. The phone call um, this April ended the mystery. He left a message on Sunday saying, I have something important to talk about. Please call me back. I was working and called the next morning. He uttered an eerily familiar phrase, you may want to sit down. Then he said, Carolyn, I'm gay. She says, I was stunned. I managed to say after a silent moment and then a deep breath, I had no idea. I'm sure a huge weight is off your shoulders. During you know, all those years I had known I had known him, I never would have guessed that he would come out as gay. We talked again briefly that night. He answered a few questions. <laughs> I don't want you to know what those questions was. Are you a bottom? <laughs> That was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. Sorry. <laughs> Seven foot bottom. Um. <laughs> Boy, it goes down just like that. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on BeExposedRadio.com. Can you tell if the leftovers from this dinner party are beginning to grow bacteria that could lead to severe diarrhea, vomiting, and stomach cramps? Listen. You can't see it either. Get leftovers into the refrigerator as soon as possible. Spoiled leftovers can make you very sick, or worse. Roughly 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year, but you can keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In biology, I learned that I'm fat. I'm stupid. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and to joke. The only thing I didn't learn in school today is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. I'm sorry. Welcome back. <laughs> you are listening to the Talk Lately Show. It's 7.33 right here on BeExposedRadio.com. Um, and like I said, the phone lines are open at one 855 See, why does this person keep jumping back in my throat? This is not okay. <clears throat> Somebody think you yeah. um um, the Clippers owner, Donald Sterling, you know him, the one that just went to that church on Sunday, that black church. He is being sued, right, by another woman, not V. Stiviano. He's being sued by another woman who alleges that while she was employed by him, they had a romantic relationship and that he subjected her to racially and sexually offensive comments. So why don't you stay, you dumb bitch? Oh my God, what is wrong with me? I need more information. Hold on. 
The complaint filed Monday in Los Angeles County Superior Court alleges that Mako Maya King's resistance. Now, to see the problem with this is why is it coming up now? Now that he's already um, put out racial uh, a racial video uh, recording, now she wants to talk. Sh shut up! Say shut up! <laughs> this is why I keep telling people to shut up. Shut up! Miserable excuse. Resistance to Sterling's stream of racist and sexual taunts caused him to retaliate against her and terminate her employment as his personal assistant and caretaker in May. King, who is represented by high profile Gloria Alvarez, just um, alleges discrimination. And of course, Gloria Alvarez would take the case. <laughs> miserable excuse she's like a um a scavenger all she do is scrape at the bottom <clears throat> alleges discrimination retaliation and intentional infliction of emotional distress let me grab you a water that's one right there i got it it's just gotta go to bed at night instead of don't um uh, sterling attorney bobby Sim simani said the suit was baseless and ridiculous and I agree I agree and not that I'm on his side on Donald Sterling's side I think this bitch uh, this lady wants her 15 minutes of fame he added he was never in, she was never employed by Donald Sterling her claim was obviously prompted by opportun opportunistic motives of course Sterling was banned for life and fined two point five million dollars from the NBA. Yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. We know. King was uh, romantically involved with Donald Sterling from two thousand and five to two thousand and eleven, while she worked for him and his foundation. But they often argued about his racist views. As the suit states. King was previously married to a black man and had two children. According to the lawsuit, Sterling alleges allegedly asked her. How could you be married to a black man? And why would you bring black people into the world? What? He allegedly also told her, I want to take you out of the black out I want to take you out of the black world and put you into my white world. Which world is that? That sounds like some kind of red pill, blue pill kind of thing. <laughs> They went into the Matrix. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because I, as far as I knew, his world was the black world too. All the black players on the um, Clippers. Yeah, I'm in here. I seen the clock. Okay. Yeah, right there. The suit states um, that contrary to his agreement to pay her ten thousand dollars a month, Sterling dangled money only if she could, if she would have sex with him. Ew. <laughs> Can you imagine him on top of her and she's scratching his back and the skin's just coming off and flaking like old people do? Ugh! Girl! Ooh! Exactly! Ooh! His hair steady falling out into her eyes and stuff. That shit is gross. You fixed the two buttons. Yes, I did. That is no great life. It's not. True. It's true. It's true, Rob. It's true. Sterling creating an intimidating, oppressive, hostile, and offensive work environment based upon sex. The complaint states. She's full of it. What does this chick look like? No picture, of course. She better not have nabby roots. It's not saying. Her name is the woman. <laughs> Her name is Mako Maya King. Never heard of her. Anyway, why did I pull this story? I don't know. Let's just move on. Happy birthday to uh, Mark Wahlberg. He'll be 43 um, June the 5th. Mm -hmm. 
shut up, Joe ba Boehner, however you say your name. I can't stand him. Stop talking. <laughs> Mariah Carey. <laughs> she is the most ridiculous human on this planet. She wore a full-length gown and high heels to the park with her babies. That is okay. At the playground. That is not true. That's not where that goes. Stop getting too excited about that. <laughs> I avoided using those two buttons for so long. Uh, yeah, um, to go back to doing that. <laughs> now you're going to try to overuse them in one show. It's not okay. I got makeup for the last time. <laughs> okay, very well. Sure. <laughs> oh, that's why I pulled the story out. I seen a gun and I was like, oh no. <laughs> A Minnesota man was arrested last week after pulling a shotgun on his neighbor who was teaching his seven-year-old daughter how to ride a bike and apparently I haven't even read the rest of the story but I bet you this is because the parent was probably being a lot of, a, a little aggressive at the daughter but the neighbor need to mind his business. According to an arrest complaint, 61-year-old Gary Drake began making comments about the father's tactics May 25th as he taught the little girl to ride on uh, to ride a bike in their cul-de-sac. The father told the neighbor, I've got it, which apparently angered the older man. If you don't like my advice, get off my street, Drake told the man, who reminded his neighbor he didn't own the street. Okay. He's going to show you that... <laughs> inappropriately, but he's going to show you. They apparently angered Drake even more, and police say he went inside to retrieve a Remington 870 shotgun. He came back with the weapon and threatened to kill the father. But Drake's wife came outside, pulled the gun away from him, and physically dragged her husband back inside. How did that happen? She must be a big woman. That has to be a big woman. She hit him by his collar. Get your ass in here. Give me this gun. Open your mouth. Um, but police said Drake came back outside once again and told the father he would kill him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Open your mouth. <laughs> she had the gun in his mouth and he got out. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. Drake admitted to police that he had a confrontation with the father saying he didn't like how the man treated the girl during the, the bike riding lesson. He admitted to drinking during the day, but denied that alcohol had influenced his behavior. Maybe next time I should have shot him, Drake said, according to the arrest complaint. Drake's wife turned over the shot, uh, his shotgun and a rifle, and he was charged with second degree assault and terroristic threatening. <laughs> What? Mm -hmm. Here's some advice. Mind your damn business. Let's stick with what I said. <laughs> Terroristic threatening. When did that get into the code book? Terroristic threatening against one person. I need you to calm down, and you know. I already talked about him. Everybody's hating on, um, uh, I'm freezing. Everybody's hating on, um, Rihanna. Who was that? I said, who? You're a loser. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, you are. I had a note that I was supposed to give out to tell today, but I, I left it in a car. I have 13 minutes back in, left in this show. You can't just call me a loser. I, I've already moved on. <laughs> So what's sad is sad and sun is sad.
<laughs> you should have combated that when we were still talking about it since I've moved on. Um, damn, ball size hail hits Nebraska as a tornado threat looms. There have been a lot of tornadoes recently. I kind of want to say a tornado. And he's holding them in his hand like a hail. Just one hail. Right? It's not a, it, it is a hail. Or is it a hay? I don't know. How do you talk about one hail? Because when it's hailing, that's more than one. So this is a hail. Or you just call it an ice ball. What's the singular for hailing? Hail. It's hail outside. Not hell. Hail. Okay, whatever. That was dumb. Hmm. My phone line's open though at one eight five five eight three five five eight five seven extension one. That's one eight five five eight three five five eight five seven extension one. You can text to the um four four three six four two nine four zero three. Four four three six four two nine four zero three. It was a slow news day. That's why I don't have anything else to talk about. I ran out of stories. I mean, I, I actually went through those stories kind of fast, though, didn't I? I did. I went through those. <laughs> it was a slow news day. Hey, Dakota. I like her. Dakota Fanning. She's a nice girl. I don't think she's acted in anything since um, what's that vampire movie? Twilight. It, I'm just changing pages and it's nothing worthy of me talking about. Well, I know what you're talking about. No. We've already moved on. <laughs> <Right. gasps> oh my gosh, they fired him. I am so shocked. I am shocked and appalled. If you haven't seen the viral video of the um, family dollar store manager after he apprehended the, um, a thief stealing Febreze out of the store, um, it was a viral video that was on Facebook and on YouTube. And, and um, well, let's let's just let me read the story and we can find out what um, happened. A manager at Family Dollar is learning a big lesson about taking his job way too serious. In a video that has gone viral, extremely viral, over the past few days, the manager is seen confronting a group of shoplifters in the in his store parking lot. The heated argument eventually led to a screaming match between the, the women, one of which was pregnant, and Gavin Adlinger, the manager, who ended up spraying one of the women in the face with Febreze and threatened to, to whoop her ass. How do you say this? W H O O P. Whoop. He whooped her ass. So they wouldn't that be whipped? He threatened to whip her ass. He whipped the stone with an eye. Right, right. Whoop. <laughs> whoop her ass. Gavin was fired from his job just days after the incident, but tell, but he tells TMZ that he made an attempt to have the video taken off the web. Unfortunately, the guy who posted it refused to take it down, resulting in Gavin no longer being employed. Gavin also tells TMZ the mother of one of the girls in the video called the store later and apologized. It said the guy had to lose his job for trying to protect his store, but he did take it too, a tad too far. Some things can be handled in a more polite, man, uh, mature manner. No, the bitch. See, why is everybody a bitch today? You have to understand that it's my favorite word. And sometimes it slips. It's just how I, I talk. It's, one, it's a favorite of mine. That I'm going to try harder to um, contain myself. 
It's like she called and apologized, though. So his anger may have been justified. Not the spraying of the Febreze, though. But if she called to apologize, she already relinquished guilt in the situation. It ain't like she called and said, I need to talk to your district manager because you sprayed me in my eyes and now one of my eyes don't work. She ain't do that. She called and said, I was wrong and I apologize. Hmm. The video was funny as hell, though. I can't do that to say. But I don't think he should have lost. What the hell are you doing? Was this sign language? What was this? This face. You don't have to keep playing this one over and over again. It seems like you like it, and I get it. Sorry, um, what's his name? Gladstone, something, something like that. Gay, something. I would love a glass of Nouveau right now. Oh, some wine in the refrigerator. Mmm. Um, Andy Cohen from Bravo is developing a new show. I slept with a celebrity. It's a real reality show. All oh, the chicken heads, all the cluck clucking that's gonna go on on that show. I have two bumps or lumps right here on my nasal passage. That is outright lies. That is not true. That is not where that goes. But why would you say that? Guys, you don't have a bump on your face. Sounds like lies a lot. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe I should do the gas. Let's turn your mic off. <laughs> Just try that for a second. Why do you keep this Because <laughs> we're getting nowhere with this conversation. <laughs> Marvel's Doctor Strange has a director. Are they making that movie too? I don't think they should. They're trying to they're saturating the the entertainment industry with all of these Marvel movies. Yo, yo, yo like Marvel movies? I do, but it's saturating it's all, now we're already waiting for Superman and Batman to come out. So you're going to throw Doctor Strange in the mix of that, then you're going to throw those, what's those, um, five things, um, aliens, the, um, whatever that movie's about. The, about the yeah, movie. them, you're saturating, you, you, you know, this is not a... It's Rocket Raccoon. You don't like Rocket Raccoon? Uh, see, my mom had, had said turn your mic off. But you asked me a question. I know, but it, you tried to get me involved, and I'm not. I just wanted to stop for a little second. Do you want more Tyler Perry movies? Uh, Tyler? <laughs> I don't go to the movies in the first place, so why would I watch something like that? I'm just saying, after a while, people are going to stop paying to go to see them because they'll just wait for them to come out on DVD. Stop saturating. And then there's too many people, there's too many stories. And it's not like they all going to come together. Well, they are supposed to all come together eventually to form the Justice League, but that's not the point. What is my point? Okay. I don't care. So you, you want to listen to this title? Arabs get mostly... Listen, wait, wait, let me start over. Arabs mostly give Obama... A negative report card. You want to read it again? Arabs mostly give President Obama a negative report card. And why wouldn't they? 
<laughs> and to live over there, I'm going to give him one, too. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I'm so glad this show is over because I can't take my mouth. It's getting real serious. Every time I turn the page, it's another story about politics. I can't take it. Take it! <sighs> the former White House cum guzzler, Monica Lewinsky. Did I say that? What the hell is your problem? I'm just wasting time at this point. Can I, can I tell everybody good news? What good news? The interview. I'm going to school. <laughs> Congratulations on you going to school, but that's where that's I'm going to be an educated black man. You know how rare they are these days? I'm going to be one of those people. Why are they rare again? Because. I don't know why you want to go to school nowadays. I don't know why. Oh, who doesn't want to go to school? A lot of people in my neighborhood don't want to go to school. In your neighborhood? <laughs> you would know who now, baby. People just not with school these days. It's sad. Not really. It's not really sad. Why? I know a lot of people that are doing very well and didn't go back to and didn't go to college. What do they do? They own their own businesses. They own car dealerships. There's a lot of them in your neighborhood, right up the street, right to the same road, full of them. They like Indians and stuff. No, not at No Limit. No, I've never been there. Not at Carbiz. And that's the only ones that's in your neighborhood. That's why I said it. Alright, we have time, sir. Oh. Oh. We'll be back on Thursday with an all new show. Up next is the uh, Sharon Nixon show, right here on BeExposedRadio.com. And then we have on Thursday an all new Lady O show where she has um, a good guest. I think a boxer is coming through here. I'm a fighter. I'm right here in the middle of the floor. We're going to be here for that. And then guess what? Next Monday is the world premiere of At the Sugar Shack with Miss J. Pearson and Miss Versatile and him and him. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Have a nice evening. <laughs>